So which is smaller, w or 10? If 10 is smaller, then the answer is 10. If w is smaller, then the answer is w, but I don't know what the value of w is. I just know it's less than 10. So that actually wouldn't be a proper answer for data sufficiency. I would actually need to know the value of w if w is a smaller one. But if I knew that w is at least as big as 10, then I wouldn't need to know the value of w because I would just say the smaller of the two is 10, and 10 is a number that we know. So if we can show that 10 is the smaller of the two numbers, we're done. If we find out that w is the smaller of the two numbers, then we can't answer the question unless we know the exact value of w. Now I like statement one because it's, uh, it's telling us that w is the bigger of the two numbers 20 and z. So if z is a small number below 20, then w is 20. And if z is a big number greater than 20, then w is z. So from that I can infer that w is at least 20. And if w is at least 20, then who's smaller, 10 or w? 10. So statement one is sufficient on its own because it allows us to infer that the value of the minimum between 10 and w is 10. Statement two says that of 10 and w, the maximum, the bigger number between 10 and w is w. So then we know that the smaller number between 10 and w is 10, and that's the answer to the question. So since each statement is sufficient on its own here, the correct answer is D. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.